another day, another duster video, because we got to get this thing going. So let's go, baby. Hey guys, welcome back. Where we left off last time, we got all the suspension out and uh, went ahead and swapped over the springs. Well, off camera, new suspensions on there. Now we got the 200 springs on, uh, cleaned up all that area, painted those bolts, did a quick it ish alignment but the car hasn't been set on the ground so uh we gotta do that okay and we got y'all i'm sorry about the extension cords and stuff now um we got our plug for our, our uh, regulator so let's go ahead and pop that guy in we got this from k motor um amazon special 699 8 orb love it let's pop that on all right so we got the plug on there all is well all is good so um i think next thing we need to do is we need to move over to our o2 sensor now you know coming out the turbo exhaust um we got it i figured that was probably the best place to put the o2 um it is you know it's about 12 14 inches away from the turbo and then it's got a nice little length around there so that's good now um all we really need to do is uh pull it off the turbo and get over here on the bench and get to working on it so for the o2 holly wants like i i don't know it's it's something ridiculous like 110 dollars for the o2 replacement um mine is on a different truck along with my adapter harness so uh after some research come up with this guy and it's a Bosch 17025 replacement. Uh, and I think it's 17025, and don't quote me, but I believe 17045 uh, or something. Anyway, the only difference is how, link, how long the harness is. Um, so I'm not going to be running an adapter harness. I also got a, uh, a female um, plug from Boost Monkey so I get away from the adapter harness and then I just keep that so whenever I switch to an NTK whenever we upgrade to the Dominator I just switch the plug back super simple stuff so 17025 and then an Amazon bung I think these are $1.25 I believe that oxygen sensor is $32 instead of the hundred and something dollars that Holly wants so still got to pull this off let's get that right quick and then uh jump into it all right guys so we got it all chucked up in the vise uh, we went ahead and we just took our calipers and figured out this was three quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this out to a three quarter. Get this guy to sit in there like so. And then uh, break out the old MIG and weld her in. Now, you know, this, most people's, this would probably be stainless, but um, we went the cheaper out here. This is just mild steel. So we can, uh, we can MIG weld all that. Um, and then I'm thinking about cutting it off and either doing a bullhorn or coming back with a teardrop or should i just keep it flush i don't know i don't know the teardrop would look super super cool i kind of like the flush look and a bullhorn i want the front end to raise up and sit up so i'm thinking about keeping it flush at the moment let me know down in the comments what you think uh would look best um see my problem with the teardrop Although it looks cool, it's a headache to get it in and out. Um, and then also, it's going to be blowing. It, if it's cold night, it's going to fog up whoever's on the right side of me. If I'm in the left lane, it's going to fog up their windshield. I mean, it would help me, but also at the same time, I'm not a dick. So, I I don't know. You let me know what you think. All right, so you got a pilot hole. Now we're going to take a step bit. Now, here's a little trick for you if, uh, if you're not familiar with step bits. So... You know, it's got the different sizes. We need a three quarter. So I just tape off everything below a three quarter. Now, as it goes down, I can see when it hits three quarter, pull it out. Very useful. Uh, I didn't know about this for the longest time. And I just had to like pull it out and check and pull it out and check. Just, you know, ah, you drop it, you know, to make sure the tape stays on and then uh, run this tape in. Super convenient method. If you don't already know this, um, I didn't. So 
Hopefully it helps. All right, so we got her up in there. Turns out I had to go to a 7-8. Um, but she's sitting in there. She's pretty. She's kind of tight. Just how I want it. Uh, so got that guy in there. We got our Miller over here. We got gas on. I guess I'm going to put the hood on and uh, get to burning her in. All right, so she's on there. Now everybody that's been thinking, well, why don't you do all the chassis stuff on your car yourself if, if you can weld? Well, I can weld. By welding, I mean I can make two pieces of metal stick together. Yeah, you know, grinder and paint make you welder you ain't, but uh, I ain't putting no paint on this. So, she's going on the car. <laughs> I mean, it ain't going to leak. That's the main part. Um, so, it don't look the best, but hey, I'm, I'm learning. I've... I really haven't welded. I'm way better with a TIG than I am on a MIG, which is crazy, but, uh, yeah, I just, I'm more comfortable on a TIG. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not great, but you, you get the point. Like, I'm more comfortable there, so my welds tend to look better. Um, I'm thinking maybe I should just go, nah, nah, I'm not, not doing it. I mean, it's, it's airtight. That's all that really matters. Uh, the O2 screws into it, so we're good. It works. El perfecto. So we'll go ahead and stick this back on the car. All right, so exhaust is back on there. Tighten down with the impact. That's the final time. It ain't coming off. We're going flush mount as of now. Subject to change. Now, I, I don't... This brings me to a point. I'm not really good at anything. Uh... This car would be so much better, obviously, if I just had somebody who built it for me. I'm not really good at anything. I'm just not afraid to do anything. Um, I wanted the chassis to get done by Scott, who's a great fabricator. Uh, they do great work. Just for this, I wanted it safe. That's it. Um, I'm not afraid to do anything. You know, I can only mess it up so bad and either I got to buy something or I got to fix something. You know, uh this this setup costs a little bit of money so something like this but like that fox body i had guys you can get into like a cheap car really cheap um like five grand you're into like a muscle car uh you know a fun toy something like this this is if you're building it the way we're building it you know uh be like fifty sixty thousand dollars but you know it's it's uh it, it's fun for me um, now I'm not great at anything, so this car is not the best. I'm hoping with, I feel like my work ethic is almost bar none. I'm dealing with back issues right now. Um, so I don't work on it nearly as much as I need to. Um, but you know, my, I feel like we're going to test it enough to where we're going to maximize this combination and, you know, hopefully be competitive. If not, then we're just. We're going to throw some money at it, and we're going to keep working at it. Um, so, I'd say all that to say this. Don't be afraid to make to make the jump. Um, success isn't overnight. It comes from, you know, hard, hard work, long hours, and putting your mind to something. So, I don't know. I don't know what this combination is going to run. I know we're going to make it. We're going to make it run, or, or it's going to blow up. It's going to go four nineties, no prepping. Or it's going to blow up. Uh, it's going to be competitive. Or once again, it's going to blow up. So, anyway, got on a tangent. Let's, uh, I guess we could start wiring up some uh, some some motor stuff. Woo! I thought I was going to be able to start it this weekend. Still got parts on the way. So, we ain't going to be able to do that. But we can go ahead and get everything ready to get that way. So, uh, we dropped my drive shaft back off. Uh, turn to, come to find out the yoke was bad on it. So, we got a new yoke. Um, we'll have that put on. So, waiting on the drive shaft to come back. We can go ahead and put in the drive shaft safety loop, um, and start wiring up the car. So, we're getting close. Let's get it. All right. So, got the exhaust back on. What I'm doing now is, uh, I just basically cut the plug. I don't know what to do with it. Cut the plug off the map sensor on my uh, harness here. Cut the plug off. Because I'm running a low dollar map sensor. All the sensors on the car are low dollar, minus the uh, the coolant temps, just a LT1 coolant temp. And then uh, with every sensor you buy from low dollar, they, they send you the connector. 
Um, so it's just your standard, you know, three pin connector. Uh, so just get on Low Dollar's website, figure out how I need to plumb it into the connector. Super simple. Get those plugged in and then uh, we can throw the harness back in the car. Bada boom, bada bing. We have our connector. So uh, according to Holly, right, hopefully this is right. The orange is your five volt sensor, black is your ground, and then your red is your reference wire. So we ran into this on Brian's truck. They, these two were swapped over backwards. Uh, and we had his printed out instructions. So I'm hoping that was just a one-time thing. So, uh, let's put this all back together and get it taped up. I was even able to keep the sticker for the map. So, so that we know. So looks great. Uh, now I got to take off another piece of that harness over there and, uh, or not the harness, the, uh, this billet connector. Uh, down here where I put on half of it. I got to take that back off. So the, it, it'll all fit Dang what just broke. Oh, no, it just never mind. I know what this is. That's my uh, Water pump. All right, and now our shifter cable is Officially hooked to the power glide. It is on there ain't coming off ah. What is happening first second neutral Hey, yeah reverse Park Okay, yeah, I promise it's not that hard on the other side. So, I don't know what we're going to wire up to that. I just don't know, guys. Anyway, uh, so we got that. We got our rat's nest. Um, I'm kind of chilling on... I hurt myself. I'm kind of just chilling on wiring for a moment. Just trying to get some other stuff going. I might go ahead and take our, uh, our drive shaft safety loop. And clean that guy up and get her a fresh coat of paint because it looks rough wherever it's at. Uh, and then we'll resume the wiring. If you can't tell, I'm not a big fan of wiring. Wiring comes easy to me. Like, I, whatever, power in, power out. I get that. It's uh, it's just meticulous. To make it look good, it takes a lot. And uh, as y'all know, my patience is... <whistles> um, I'd much rather just be out making passes. But... We're getting there. That's why I'm focusing on trying to get this thing running. And then we'll worry about trying to make it look good. Uh, I need that. I need to get it running so that I can, uh, you know, have a sense of, oh, okay, now let's make it look good. Um, the few things that we're doing along the way to make it look good, like, you know, that panel and some of the wiring stuff, it's just so we don't have to go back later to do it. Uh, but as far as, like, the body and all that stuff... Uh, once we get it running, uh, I'm going to strip the rest of the paint off and then we'll put it in primer and we'll probably race out this year, or, you know, during the week, work on it here and there. But it's not going to be extremely pretty, but it's going to be good enough. So I'm going to find the drive shaft safety loop, get that thing all cleaned up and go from there. Ha! Ah, found it. This thing is, boy, it's seen some better days, but this thing's older than me. So. Not too, too bad. Let's get her on uh, cleaned up and uh, we'll throw some bolts in her. Drill a hole or two and put her on in there now. Now, this car has been a race car since 1990. I've probably put 40 or 50 miles on it. Okay, may maybe 100, maybe 200. Like, no more than 200, though. So all this is from... <laughs> that's not a, lot of, not a lot of miles. I've got all this dirt. That was underneath the car. So, go ahead and blow this out. Uh, and then, uh, I guess, scrub that a little bit more and, you know, shoot some black on our color good. Oh, y'all should know the saying. We painted black. Hit the track, baby. All right. So, while that's over there drying, we're going to go ahead and hop on over here to this fuel rail and start throwing some injectors in. These are big wheelies, 220s. A lot of people run these with really good luck. Um, we'll see how they go. Now these are the short style with the adapters on it to make it the long style because obviously we're long style. Uh, we were EV1, I think these are EV6. But I have the harness, so it's fine. So, throw these in, let's get to work. Some people use like Vaseline and stuff for the O-ring so they don't tear. Um, I'm a little bit different. I mean, I, I do use Vaseline. I think Vaseline works well. This here, 
I mean, don't don't worry about the bottle. This is just soap and water. This is Dawn and water. Um, and this is what I found works best for me. So just get a little bit on your hand, rub the rings on it. They typically slide right in. About two minutes later, they're in. All right, so all the injectors are wired up. Um, we got that guy drying. Now, I'm basically gonna stop right here on the video part, uh, work a little bit on the dash stuff and uh, get this thing cleaned up and we'll catch you back tomorrow. All right, so as you guys can see uh, where my dash goes on, that bar runs right in the middle. So all this stuff doesn't clear for my, my gauge bezel, which is no big deal. We'll just pop it all out. All right, so now she's all out. And this is what it looks like. We still gotta pop out those things. Um, where it says, you know, oil break, all that good stuff. So get all that popped out and uh, go from there. All right, so got them all out of there. Really simple. They're just these tabs and they're kind of like plastic welded on there. I just took the soldering iron, heated them up, and then pulled it while it was hot. And broke, broke one or two, but you know, no big deal. So, that's money. I like that a lot. Now, um, trying to think of what we need to do. So, I got this ABS plastic that's over here on the floor because everything's a mess. Y'all know me. Everything's a mess. Um, and I think this ABS plastic is going to look great. You know, just like right at home. Let's. Let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah. That'll do, pig. That'll do. But then we just need to basically cut that and you know, cut these areas over here. I'm debating whether to take this guy out. Cause that's right where the wires come through for the shift light. So I that's kind of what that is. I might just make this hole look better. Um, but yeah. So we need to leave this one because I am going to put a, uh, a headlight switch in it. With everything else, um, we can just go through and, uh, yeah, we'll ABS plastic this. Uh, just need to measure out where. Very, very, very simple though. Uh, we can just take this guy. Watch this. Oh no, it's not as simple as I thought. Take this guy and kind of draw it out and we can cut it. All right, so here it is all finished with the ABS in there. So as you see, I just uh, plastic welded all of that. And uh, I went ahead and threw down a base in here. We're gonna have to body work this whole thing, obviously, uh, cause it don't look great, but the holes are all covered. Um, and we went ahead and fixed our shift light uh, cause this guy was broke too. So we'll have to sand that up and you know shoot some uh shoot some paint on that but it uh turned out all right so first time ever plastic welding we got it all knocked out good for us uh next uh next video we'll go ahead and you know finish up some wiring i've already got a lot of it good this is all some extra wiring that we had laying around and uh finish wiring up the inputs and outputs uh but I mean, we're we're making progress. Uh, I don't like to throw out videos like this, but uh, this is what you can expect when building a car from scratch. So, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, comment, like, and subscribe. We'll see you next one. Peace. Bleep bleep. That's all, folks.